Now that your zero account is linked to dry run, I'm going to show you exactly how you can import that data into those dry run scenarios. So click here to get started. So here we're into a brand new dry run plan and it has a single scenario. Now to connect to zero, click on the zero logo. And now you can decide what you want to import into dry run from zero. So you have the choice of bringing in the invoices that you've sent out to, to your customers in zero into the receivables area of dry run and also the bills that you have in zero into your payables area. So I'm going to select both. Now, depending on how much data you have in zero, this could take a few minutes to import, especially if you have a number of years worth of data and if you have a lot of records every month. But when you come back to dry run the next time and refresh your data, it actually won't take very long at all, likely well under a minute to update. And now we've successfully imported all of our data from zero. So let's take a look at what makes up a single scenario. So first I'll expand the scenario and now I can see that I have more than just my month start, month total and month end. Now I can see three key sections, recurring, payables and receivables. And if I expand any of these sections, you can see that there's a lot of data inside each of these sections. Now the payable section in dry run contains all of the bills from zero. And these bills will be listed by due date, so you have a better idea of how they will affect your cash flow. If I open up the receivables area, these are the invoices that we've sent out to our customers. And again, they're going to show it by due date, so you have a better idea of when this money is going to come into your account and is going to be active cash flow that you can use to pay your bills. Now the final section in Dry Run is the recurring area, and this is the area where you'll actually set up your budget. And once I open up this recurring area, you can see I've already set up quite an extensive business budget. Now this looks like an awful lot of information, but actually it only took me about 15 minutes to set this entire budget up. And that's because what I can do is add an item to dry run and I can set up uh, a repeat for that item. So let's say I have a weekly IT cost of $25 and it starts in January. I don't have a specific end date in mind. I save that item and it's going to repeat weekly across dry run. Now the really important part about taking the time to set up this budget is that it isn't just a retrospective look at the money in your business. By setting up a repeating budget, it actually looks forward. So if it's January 2016, you can actually look forward all the way through to May on this screen. And you can slide forward and look months and months and months ahead of time. Now another really important feature about this repeating budget is that you can change any of these items at any time. So let's say you believe in March your office rent is going to go up. You can actually change that item and select the option to carry that change forward. And so it only took me a few minutes to add this two dozen repeating items into my budget, but you can actually see how your budget is affected down the road. And that also allows you to do all sorts of what if type of forecasts. So for instance, here we have a sales forecast of what type of sales we believe will come into dry run. Let's say we duplicated this forecast and turned it into a growth plan. Now we could go into our re recurring budget, go down to our human resources area, and let's say we add a new staff member. Now you can see what happens to our forecast by just adding a single new staff member into our budget. And a couple other little features that you may find really useful in dry run. First off is the month start is actually editable. That means that you can always reconcile to your bank account. And we also have next to the recurring payables, receivables, and total lines, something we call quick model. And this just lets you quickly model something out, test it really quickly, and remove it from your plan. It also lets you look at different things such as compound growth. So let's say we believed we could actually sustain an 8% growth compounding monthly in our receivables. Now you can see what happens when you're growing by 8% a month. And so that's how you can import your zero data into dry run and also take advantage of the scenario type structure in dry run to evaluate different sales forecasts, growth plans, and what if scenarios that can really affect your business. Thanks for watching and please get in touch if you have any questions. If you go to the support link in the top right of Dry Run, that will take you to our support site 
where we're building up a library of tips, tricks, and answers to frequently asked questions. And if you want to ask us a question directly, please click on the question mark in the bottom right-hand corner of our screen, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for giving Dry Run a try.